The human voice is the world's most widely used mode of communication. It's not text, it's not images, it's not video. It's the voice. And now, machines can generate human voice. Listen to this. Last month, 20,000 migrant children were illegally brought into the United States, a dramatic increase. My administration has presented Congress with a detailed proposal to secure the border and stop the criminal gangs, drug smuggling. That's Donald Trump's voice generated by an AI system. Machines are really getting good at this. And it's no surprise that now these synthetic voices are used to, de to deceive and misinform. Here are two examples. The one on the left is an article in the Washington Post that appeared last uh, month. It's about a major heist. An employee in a large company was called up by his boss and asked to transfer a large sum of money into a bank account. And he did so, except it wasn't his boss's voice. It was a machine-generated voice. On the right is a virtual kidnapping, a crime that is on the rise in the United States. Someone will call you and tell you that they've held your loved one hostage, and you might hear your loved one's voice. What do you do? There was a time when you needed to be a voice artist to carry out such crimes or you needed to have access to recordings. But it's become very easy now. AI systems are so easy to download and use that anyone can do it. So what do we do about this? How do we protect ourselves? The solution is easy. We trust no disembodied voice. We check everything. It's time to appoint guardsmen at the gates, so to speak. In the world of dig digital speech processing, there are four technologies that can help. You can think of these as four guardsmen. The first one is signal verification. Is this recording real? Is it generated by a human or a machine? The second is speaker verification. Is this person who they say they are? The third is speaker identification. Who is this person? And the fourth is speaker profiling. What does the voice of this person tell me about him or her? So in this talk today, I'm going to focus on the first and the fourth guard. So let's start with the first one, signal verification. Here on this slide, there's a woman who has heard the recording of her friend's voice saying something nasty about her. And the machine is telling her, no, that's not uh, your friend's voice. It's, it's being generated by a machine. The good news is that synthetic voices, while they can fool humans today, it's not easy for them to fool machines. And that is because the human voice is incredibly complex at the finest levels. It's not only very complex, it is also very inconsistent. Machines can replicate the complexity, but they cannot replicate the inconsistency. Machines are very consistent. And to understand the complexity of the human voice, I would like to explain the voice production process in a little more detail to you. So the human vocal tract is a resonance chamber. If you imagine a building of that shape and a little guy shouting into that building, what would you hear? You would hear resonances, echoes. And if you change the shape of that building, what would happen? The nature of those resonances would change. When we speak, air comes out of our lungs and goes through two vocal folds, two membranes, which are in our larynx, which is highlighted in red over there, and makes them vibrate. And this vibration creates a sound in our vocal chambers. This sound resonates in our vocal chambers, and that is the sound that listeners hear as you speak. And we produce different sounds by changing the shape of these vocal chambers, by moving our lips, jaw, and etc., all our articulators. It's a very 
complicated biomechanical process. And what comes out as a result of this process? S-U-L-L-I-V-A-N. That is my friend Tom Sullivan spelling out his last name. What comes out as a result of this process is a pressure wave that looks like the signal on the top. It has thousands of frequencies, which are shown below. You may not be able to see the entire uh, picture. On the vertical axis and on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis, is time. The color at any point on that figure is the energy in that frequency at that time. And the high energy patterns you see through, through this picture are the resonances of the vocal tract. This representation is called a spectrogram. Now let me introduce you to tones. Tones are single frequencies. I'm going to play out a sequence of tones to you. They appear, each frequency appears as a line on the spectrogram. You may not be able to hear all of them. Human hearing is limited. So I'll play out a 40 hertz tone, a 100 hertz tone, 200 hertz tone, 400 hertz tone, 1,000 hertz tone, and 3,000 hertz tone. Now let me introduce you to modulations. When one tone is influenced by another, when one frequency rides upon another, it is modulated by that frequency. So I'm going to play modulated frequencies in sequence now, 400 hertz modulated by a frequency of 40 hertz. Its spectrogram is right on top there. Here's how it sounds. 400 hertz modulated by 20 hertz. Spectrogram in the middle. Here's how it sounds. 400 hertz modulated by 10 hertz. 400 hertz modulated by 5 hertz. The spectrogram is not here on the slide. Now let's listen to a human voice. I'm sorry, it's not playing. Let's look at the spectrogram of this voice, knowing about tones and modulations. Here is the spectrogram. Look at the complexity there. On the vertical axis, thousands of frequencies. Each frequency varies differently, is modulated differently at different times. How complex is that? It is very difficult for a machine to replicate even a section of this human voice. And I'll give you an example, my attempts at replicating a section of this spectrogram. So here's the first one. I get the pitch right. Second attempt, I try to get the harmonics. Third attempt, getting close. Here's the human voice. And that is the best I could do. Now, is it this, just this voice? Is it just this voice that is this complex? Let's find out. Let's compare this to another person's voice. This is the spectrogram of the voice of Lata Mangeshkar, who is an Indian playback singer. At one time, she held the world record, I believe, of having the world's sweetest voice. Let's hear her voice. If you compare the, this spectrogram 
with the one I showed you earlier, it would differ in every aspect. There is no part of the spectrogram that is similar to the other one. Two different, two voices are very, very different. Human voices are very different. Incidentally, what she is singing here are the words, my name will be lost, this face will change, my voice is my only identity. And this song was recorded in 1977. So, human voice is not only complex, it is also unique, as we see. In fact, the chances of two people having the same DNA are the same as the chances of being identical twins, one in 250. The chances of two people having the same fingerprint, one in 54 million, according to an estimate, but no one really knows. The uniqueness of fingerprints is really not proven. The chances of two people having the same voice is less than one in a trillion. Human voice, your voice, is very, very unique. And it is not only unique, it carries a lot of information. And it is this information based on which we make judgments about other people from their voices. I'll give you an example here. So I will play out a recording to you, and I want you to note the judgments you make about the speaker in this recording. Here, can I share this off dispatch Robinson? How can I help you? Hello, sir. Can you hear me fine? Yes. How can I help you? All right, listen to me very carefully, okay? All right, listen to me very carefully and don't interrupt me. I've got seven pipe bombs surrounding me theme park. Seven pipe bombs. The blast radius will go off within a 500 meter radius, killing everybody within it. The seven pipe bombs are located in an undisclosed location around Cedar Point. I'm not afraid to blow them up. I have an AK-47. If the bombs don't detonate in one hour, I'm gonna run in with my AK-47 killing everybody in the park. Do you understand? What did you think about this person? Young, American, people form a lot of opinions about this person. But suppose I analyzed his voice. What if I analyzed his voice and told you that this person is white, he's Caucasian, he's brought up in America, probably in the Northwest, he's about 170 centimeters tall, he weighs about 72 kilograms, he's about 38 years old, he is high on cocaine. He is a heavy smoker. He is in a small room. His room has a wooden floor. The room has gypsum walls. There is a large glass window behind him. He is using a laptop to make the call, probably an IBM ThinkPad. There is a ceiling fan in this room, and so on. What if I went one step ahead and told you that this is what he looks like? This is what I call profiling humans from their voice, and this is my research. We can profile humans because the human voice carries a lot of information. We just don't realize how much information it carries. It carries information about your physical and physiological states, your age, height, weight, your health, your background, your personality, your environment, your face, and much more. The dimensions of your vocal chambers can be deduced from the resonances in the voice. And your vocal chambers have a very close relationship to your skull structure. And your skull structure has a very close relationship to your face, but it doesn't stop there. If I can deduce your skull structure, and if I can deduce your age and your height and your ethnicity, I can probably deduce the rest of your skeletal structure. And if I have your weight and your BMI, I can fill in that skeletal structure, and so it becomes possible to reconstruct the entire human body from their voice. Where is this research now? A live system for profiling was demonstrated at the World Economic Forum in Tianjin, China, last year in September. You could walk up to a system, say something, and it would deduce all sorts of things about you, and it would also reconstruct your face. About 1,000 people tried out this system. And then earlier this year, in February, we reversed the technology, 
and we recreated Rembrandt's voice from his self-portraits. Here is a technical book about the subject. It tells you more about this technology, and it also tells you where the technology and where my research stands at this point in time. Thank you. <laughs>